Absolutely, and, and please do elaborate on that structurally with those extended responses, with those longer answers, uh, any practical tips you can give to students listening to this? Like what were the, the ins and outs of that structure? The kind of best piece of information I could give is always defining the terms that are within the question. Say it's like a question on genetic technologies, like offering a definition of what is a genetic technology and then providing an example of a genetic technology and then using that example to go in depth into what the question is asking you and how the content you've studied and the examples you've studied relates to that question. Because especially with the exams, I found, especially with our exam, it was a lot more about like application of the content rather than just using the content, especially with the extended response we did. So it's a lot of definitions just to show the like examiner that you understand what's being discussed, like using scientific terminology, and then using that to kind of delve deeper into what you're talking about and it also like reinforces your understanding and really solidifies like it creates a solid argument yes and, and would that be something you would do in the introduction like would you split up your paragraphs like just just walk us through where you're doing each of these things and and what were the key points as well within those bodies if you had them i definitely did the definitions like at the very beginning like the first thing i would do is the definition like going back to that genetic technologies example i would say like genetic technologies are mm. da 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 for instance, say it was gene therapy. Gene therapy is an example of this where in da, 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 one such example of gene therapy is and then going into like an application of gene therapy, whether it be like cystic fibrosis and then ex explaining that and then relating it back to the question. Got it. And was sorry, was that in the body paragraph? Was that in a paragraph after you were saying you go into each example? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, like breaking it up into paragraphs is like a major like it helps significantly with just kind of making the content cohesive and like making it kind of visibly like cohesive for the marker. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't want to overwhelm the marker, right? So, you know, a short def a short introduction, I imagine, with those definitions, then going into each of the examples. Now, how many of those would you have and how long approximately? I know this does vary student to student, but how long would you say yours would have been for each paragraph? I think it also depended on how many marks the response was um, for our exam it was a nine mark response and it was relating to like a particular scenario so what I remember doing was going into like the genetic technology used for that particular scenario and then providing I think it was two other examples of genetic technologies and then relating them back to that original question and the original scenario that we were given. I'm trying to think of like a solid allocation, maybe like one every three marks. But So with part. like a seven marker, even you might do two body paragraphs as well. And then would you have a short, like two or three for seven to nine markers? Because you're going to get at least two of those as far as I understand. Yeah, absolutely. And make sure that they're in depth as well. Like maybe like doing multiple that aren't as in depth or like a couple that are really solid and really in depth.